What comes to your mind when I say open source? Tough question. VLC, Android, Linux, Firefox. What else? What else? So if you have run out of names, I'll tell you some cool open source apps which will put popular Android apps to shame. But before that, why all this open source and fuss? Mostly they are free, you don't get any ads or tracking and they are better than popular alternatives. But best of all, you support a huge community of awesome developers who are cool enough to not send your data to Chinese servers. So let's get started with some of the popular open source apps. Now with all these apps installed on your phone, you're not sure which one of them is using internet in the background. It not only affects your mobile data, but is also a major privacy breach. So I use NetGuard to block applications from using the internet in the background. For example, let's take a popular phone which is known for showing ads in the gallery app, video player and even lock screen. So now when I block the internet for these applications, the popular phone can't show me ads there. Smart. I don't need to say anything about the Facebook app. You all know how good it is. I just couldn't live with the battery drain and its background processes on my phone. So here is an open source FB client app or rather a web wrapper which gives you the entire website on phone. But here's the best part. When you open FB, no ads. It's lightweight like 100 KB only. You also get an inbuilt messenger which is okayish looking. More of how you see on the FB website. The only caveat though is you miss on instant notifications. But hey, you're saving battery and things stay private. Now let's talk about the launcher on your Android device. You might argue on anything, but at least you would agree that the stock launcher look is the best. I have been using Launcher for about 6 to 7 months now and hardly I experienced any crash. It's lightweight, it's slick and you can customize it to the core. Hang on, let me show you rather. I use Spotify a lot so I have to set it to trigger when I double tap on the home screen. And if you're wondering, yes, you can back up your Launcher settings and restore them on other devices. Now coming to your browsing habits, you should try Brave Browser. Well, Brave Browser is quite popular, but nonetheless, the list would have been incomplete without the mention. In case you don't know about the ad-free Brave Browser, it is based on Chromium. So the look and feel, the shortcuts are all similar to Chrome Android. And before you ask me in the comments, Desktop Sync is in beta and yes, it does support progressive web apps you just have to enable it in the flags. Most of us stick to Google Photos or the native gallery app you get with the OEM. Some of you might be using Quick Pick, but you know the Cheetah mobile fiasco. So as a replacement, I jumped onto Simple Gallery Pro. On Play Store, it's paid, but if you download from F-Droid, it's available for free. It has the same material design like Quick Pick, Although you lose out on some features like cloud storage, Google Drive connectivity, but what you get is total privacy, no ads, and plus hidden folders. Well, open camera is something which brings lots of manual control to every single phone. I've been using it for a while now and was amazed to find out that it's open source. Now, the UI is one thing which is not extremely amazing, but the rest of the stuff like manual controls, raw video mode, custom bit rates, and FPS settings are just awesome. To give you a better picture, here is an actual picture. So the video you see on the left is from the native camera app and the one on the right is from open camera. Since you have a lot of details at your disposal, the color grading looks amazing with the raw footage. One handy little feature is external mic support. I can now go live on my mobile phone and have great audio as well. Works good for Instagram as well as YouTube. Just make sure you don't have people screaming around. 
Now Tor is not just an app, but it's an entire community, the Tor community. For a long time, people who have been using Orbot to connect to Tor network on Android had to use a separate browser called Orfox. This recently changed few months back with the Tor browser, which does both in one app. It's still in alpha phase, so not high expectations, but I like it. Tor basically hides your identity while browsing the internet, kind of like a VPN, but instead of connecting you with one VPN server, Tor browser bounces your traffic to three other Tor users. Expect it to be slow and use wisely when required. You can also use it to access the deep web, which we won't go deep in. So why this entire video on open source apps? See, open source app developers don't have a huge marketing budget. So these apps don't get popular, while the shitty ones with a heavy marketing budget end up installed on your device. So we are here to make a change. Share this video if you care about the open source community and we are doing a live video this month. So keep those burning hot red questions below in the comment section and don't forget to add hashtag AskTechWiser and this is it from me. See you in the next one.